Hansi everyone! Are you ready to make some Vanek with Miss Ashley? I'm here in my kitchen and after reading the story Awasasuk and the world famous Vanek, what better activity to do than make some Vanek ourselves? Now you might think, I can't make Vanek, it's too difficult. Trust me, it's really easy and you don't need many ingredients. Here's what you need. You need some flour, you need some salt, some baking powder, and some oil. Measuring scoops also help, especially if this is your first time making bannock, um, but if you've made bannock before, you might be able to just eyeball it and, and take a guess. Miss Ashley is going to use some measuring scoops just to try and make sure I get it right. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is put some flour into our bowl. Now I need about three cups of flour but I'm only gonna put two cups in first. Peak, miso, count with me. So I'm gonna scoop my flour. And do you see, it's not heaping, and it's not just a little bit, it's a full cup. So that's peak, and I said we need miso. All right, there's miso. Okay, got my flour. I'm going to save this though because I need to add in another cup in a little bit. Next, we're going to add in our salt. Now, my salt comes in a bag. Your salt might look a little bit different, but just as long as it's salt, it will do the trick. For the salt, you need one teaspoon. Okay, so I have my little measuring scoop here and I'm going to add in whoops, one teaspoon. There we go. Next, I need some baking powder. Now for this, I need two tablespoons of baking powder. Here's my tablespoon. And just like with the flour, I'm gonna be as precise as I can. It's not heaping and it's not just a little bit. It's a full tablespoon. There's one and two, miso. All right, put my lids back on. Now I'm gonna mix it. You can mix it with your hands if you want, um, but I'm gonna use a spoon. So I'm just gonna mix it around. I want the baking powder and the salt and the flour to get all mixed together. pretty mixed. Okay, now we need to add in some water. Now try to get the water as hot as you can handle safely, okay? I just used hot water from my tap um, and I, I let it cool for a couple of minutes, but um, try to get it as hot as you can, okay? And I have a lot of water here. I'm not going to pour all this water in. I'm going to pour in a little bit and wait for it to get kind of sticky so it covers all the flour and then I'll add in more flour. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to start by adding just a little bit of flat water. Some nippy, that's the Cree word for water, nippy. So we're adding it in and I'm using my spoon. This could be a super fun sensory experience if you just want to use your hands too. Of course, make sure your hands are clean, right? Miss Ashley washed her hands before she started this video. All right, so you can kind of see there, it's getting like that. I need it to be a little bit more runny though, so I'm gonna add in a little bit more water. Mixing it around. Mix, mix, mix. Okay, this kind of looks like ooey, gooey glue, but that's exactly what we want it to look like. I'll show you what it looks like. Can you see? Awesome. So now it's time to add in our other cup of flour. I'm not just gonna dump it in though. I'm gonna measure it out, one cup, and I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit at a time. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Okay, now I'm gonna mix this in, 
and see if I need more water. I probably will. I can add more flour. Okay. Still didn't add all of it. Remember, we're just sprinkling in the last cup, little by little. It's easier to add more, but it's hard to take some out if we add too much. Okay, this is coming along great. I think I can add in the rest of my flour. If you accidentally add in all your flour, or you add in little by little, but then you think, uh-oh, I've added too much. You can just add some more water. That'll be fine. Okay. This is coming, turning out lovely. Can you see how it's kind of like a dough now? That's what we want to make. When we make bannock, we are making a dough. So we want to make it perfect. So I think that looks pretty good. Now, Miss Ashley's going to use her hands for the last part, okay? Because now we need to do something called kneading it. So I'm going to knead it. I don't use the spoon for that. Stick that there. And with the last little bit of flour, you're gonna sprinkle it on your hands like that. You might make a bit of a mess, but that's okay because you can clean it up after. And the flour will help the dough, the bannock dough, not stick to your hands. Okay, now I'm using some parchment paper. That's gonna help it not stick to my counter. Okay, are you ready? I'm gonna pour the dough, whoa, there it is. Okay, and now we're gonna knead it. Just like that, and it will be sticky at first when you touch it, that's okay. Keep kneading it. And they say you want to knead it for about, um, about two minutes, two to three minutes. If it's not getting any less sticky in that time, then you can just add some more flour. Okay. And bannock was a really good food for our ancestors because it provided them with lots of energy that they needed when they were outside all day hunting and riding on their horses. And uh, it was an easy food for them to make and tasty. Now, I have another question for my friends at home. How do you think they, our ancestors, would get things like flour and salt? to make bannock. Did they grow it? No. Did they go to Walmart and buy it? No, because there was no Walmart back then. Okay, so our ancestors, they would trade. They would trade with people for things like flour and salt to make bannock. And they would trade things that they had here on their land. So things like animals that they trapped. Sometimes people would want the trapped animals for their beautiful fur to help keep warm. And um, so that's one of the ways they would get the ingredients they needed to make the bannock. Okay, so there we have it. Now you have a good piece of dough. It's not sticking to me anymore. And it's soft. Just like that, okay? So now once your dough looks like that, you might need to wash your hands. Ms. Ashley's gonna do that. And then I'll take you over to my stove and show you what we do next. All right, friends. So Miss Ashley has washed her hands again. They are clean and not sticky anymore. And our dough is here, ready to be cooked. Now some people bake their bannock uh, today. Some people fry their bannock. Some people still cook their bannock over the fire and I think that's a great thing to do, especially if you guys have the opportunity to have a backyard fire or when you're camping. Um, but today, Miss Ashley is going to fry her bannock. So I'm using some oil. Some people use um, butter or lard. 
I don't have those things in my house. So Miss Ashley is going to use vegetable oil to do that. So, um, and I put the oil on the pan and I put my heat to about medium high. Now you definitely want a grown up to help you with this, okay? Using the stove or the oven or anything that gets really, really hot is not something that you should be doing by yourself. So you need to get your mom or your dad or cook them, mush them, a really grown up brother, sister, an auntie, anyone that's a grown up to help you with this part, okay? And what we're gonna do, I'm not gonna take all my bannock dough and just plop it on there. That would not maybe turn out so good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little piece, kind of rip it off so that it looks like that. And I'm gonna just roll it around a little bit and flatten it so that it's kind of like that. Okay, and now I've had my oil in my pan. It's getting nice and hot. I can feel the heat. So Miss Ashley is going to put it on there like that. And I'll put as many on here as can fit. There you go. You want your dough to be about the same size so that it will cook at about the same uh, rate, same time, okay? All right, I can already see that the oil is starting to bubble, which is really cool. As the oil gets hotter and hotter, it's gonna bubble more and more, and soon we're gonna even hear it sizzling. That's the sizzling sound of oil. Oops. Okay, so Miss Ashley's gonna put four on there, and then I'll, do, I'll save the rest for the next round. All right. Now, if you come zoom in over here, you can see what's happening. See how the oil is starting to bubble? And if you listen, I can hear it sizzling. Can you hear it sizzling at home? It's getting really hot now. And I'm gonna leave it like this for a little bit, maybe a couple minutes. And then I'm gonna use my flipper and I'm gonna flip them over to cook the other side. All right, friends, so this has been simmi uh, sizzling and simmering for a few minutes here. So I'm going to take my flipper, also known as a spatula, I believe, and we're going to flip it over. Oh, look at that. Can you see? What color did it turn? Yeah, it's kind of, we, we would say that it's getting brown, golden brown. So that's exactly what we want to happen, okay? Um, so I'm going to leave this side for a few minutes. And then our bannock should be all done and ready to eat. All right, friends, so there it is. My bannock is all done and ready to eat. Now you can eat it with pretty much anything. Lots of times if, you, if you're looking for something to make it taste a little sweet, you can mix it with some jam. And just put some jam on your bannock or dip your bannock in the jam. I'm going to have my bannock with some soup and jerky. Mm -mm. 